as it should go when um, the AV valve closes. The time lapse there changes, which is why um, the, we call it a premature um, closing of the valve. And you hear the second heart sound closer to the first heart sound in this case. So the lub dub becomes very close, almost like there's like one um, beat together, you know, in the same time frame. So we said that the two pacemakers generating the depolarization uh, is causing this to, uh, causing your ventricles to not have enough time to fill with blood between the first and second contraction of the heart, which uh, is why the reduced stroke volume means the second beat from your semilunar valve fails to produce a normal pulse. And this we call the pulse deficit. So when you don't get a normal um, pulse, we call it deficit um, because of reduced stroke volume there from your second heartbeat. Okay, so that was number 10. We're going to number 11 now in critical thinking question. That's the last question from chapter um, 17 here. It says, during shock caused by loss of blood, the blood pressure may fall dramatically, although the heart rate is elevated. Explain why blood pressure falls despite increase in heart rate. So we're, we're saying that when you're losing blood, right, during a shock, um, you're losing blood volume. So you can imagine that will cause the blood pressure to drop, right? Whenever you have less volume, you have less blood pressure. Um, but when you have lead, less blood pressure, it says explain why uh, blood pressure falls despite the increase in heart rate. So even though the blood pressure is falling, the heart, heart rate increased. The reason here is again your regulation. So whenever the body, you know, faces this kind of deviation, you're trying to fix that. So blood, you're losing blood which is causing you to have a lower blood pressure, the baroreceptors immediately do this uh, ref reflex or send out this reflex through your um, sympathetic stimulation, increasing it. So by that, when you have sympathetic stimulation, you have this epinephrine and norepinephrine levels increasing. That causes the heart rate and the stroke volume to increase. But in this case, since blood is being lost in this shock, so you're losing blood all the time, even though the heartbeat is faster and you are um, pumping blood all over to tissues, but still, because of the loss of blood, the blood pressure is still low. You can't fix that. It's like negative feedback trying to work while uh, positive feedback makes the deviation larger, in a way, you could say that, um, because you can't stop this blood from... Um, from the sh blood from losing or you can't s yeah you can't keep the blood in so which is why the deviation gets larger and you have um, low blood pressure but a uh, high heart, um, heart rate is still increased a lot more now we move on to chapter 18 first question here is number four number four says in end in endurance trained athletes, the hematocrit can be lower than normal because plasma volume increases more than RBC numbers increase. Explain why this condition would be beneficial. Now, athletes who train for endurance training, usually what they do is um, aerobics. And remember when we looked at muscle chapters and some others, we were looking at red fibers, white muscle fibers, right? Like in red meat, for example, you have one of the things you have is your hemoglobin that makes it red, right? And of course, lots of mitochondria. Now, if you notice how a turkey meat has more red meat in the leg area of the turkey than um, the other areas, because they use that for walking and running more. So you can see that very clearly in turkey meat. But uh, endurance training is when that training you know, the aerobic exercise that you do deliberately uh, every day, you're training yourself for it, uh, causes you to slowly increase the number of RBCs in your blood and in your muscles. You have more mitochondria too. So the RBCs increase. 
But if you remember from your blood chapter, one of the things that happens when RBCs increase is we have a higher hematocrit. But in this case, we don't have a high hematocrit. And the reason is, even though the RBCs are increasing in number, so is plasma volume increasing in number, which is why you, you don't have a high blood viscosity which you know causes a problem with blood flow so the plasma volume keeps everything um, normal so it's beneficial if you didn't have an increase in plasma volume then uh, increase in uh, oxygen levels increase in rbc would actually be very little to you so that's why we say with less viscosity blood volume increases and that increases the flow to your tissues and um, that's one of the reasons this is beneficial for uh, your system. And number six now says that a very short nursing student is asked to measure the blood pressure of a very tall person. She decides to measure the blood pressure at the level of the tall person's foot while he is standing. What artery does she use? Okay, first of all, we the question is asking what artery is she using. So since she's uh, measuring blood pressure down at his feet, it's probably either the dorsalis pedis artery or posterior tibial artery. One of those arteries um, probably um, it falls under there. But the next question says, after taking the blood pressure, she decides that the tall person is suffering from hypertension because the systolic pressure is 210 millimeter mercury. Now, is her diagnosis correct? Explain why or why not. Now, this is actually a fun kind of question. First of all, are you even supposed to measure blood pressure in your feet? No, right? You can't do that. Um, you, the best place to measure your blood pressure is your left or right arms um, close to your heart level there. Remember we talked about hydrostatic pressure and we talked about gravity. So when you're measuring pressure down at the feet, the feet is far away from your heart close to the ground and you have this whole volume from head to toe, whole volume of blood or fluid that puts pressure at your feet. We call that the hydrostatic fluid or pressure, sorry. The hydrostatic pressure is now causing uh, um, the blood pressure in your feet, in your arteries to be high. So if she's measuring the blood pressure in your feet and it's 210 and she's wondering if it's hypertension, that's actually probably just normal for that person um, uh, since you know, he's standing. Now standing, again, for a prolonged period, remember how that increases more hydrostatic pressure and you have um, this um, edema and all these other things can happen there, fluid accumulation, because of increased pressure in there. So that's why she is definitely wrong in measuring the blood pressure at the feet and um, probably that's not a good thing to do and he probably does not have hypertension um, in his case. So she should be measuring the blood pressure in her arms, in his arms, or um, right or left arm. Okay, so that was number six. Number eight says, a patient is suffering from edema in the lower right limb. Explain why massage helps remove the excess fluid. Remember what happens in the case of edema is, for example, if we go back to the example of the feet and standing, prolonged uh, period or standing for a long time causes a high hydrostatic pressure in your feet. So the arteries there in your capillaries, remember you have a venous end and a arterial end, right? So in your arterial end, you have this pressure, uh, this high pressure that causes the fluid to more fluid to go out from your arteries than osmosis to bring it in. Opposite happens in your venous end. In the venous end, what happens is you have more osmosis, so more fluid comes in because the pressure in the venous end is lower than the pressure in the arterial end. So there's more fluid coming through osmosis um, to your venous end than the fluid leaves 
through your um, leaves the